Okay, here's an article in uh, Biden's approval is low, except compared with everyone else's. This is by Paul Krugman. He writes for the New York Times, but I'm reading this on DNYUZ. He makes some interesting points here. He said, what do you call someone who speaks only one language? A, an American. <laughs> It's an old joke, but it still works. In fact, I'm monolingual myself, even though my academic work was largely focused on international trade and finance. In my defense, the great bulk of global economic research is published in English, and in general, Americans lack of language skills is less important than their insularity, their relative unfamiliarity with what happens and how things work in other nations. Other countries, especially wealthy ones, that more or less match the United States in technological development and general ability to get things done, are a sort of mirror that helps us see ourselves more clearly. Yet many Americans, even supposedly knowledgeable commentators, often seem unaware of both the ways other nations are similar to us and the ways they are different in particular. With the looming election in everyone's mind, how many are aware that President Biden is among the more popular, well, less unpopular leaders in the Western world. I'll come back to that surprising fact and what it tells us in a minute. First, let's talk about some other international comparisons that seem relevant to the current situation. Although we hear politicians on the campaign trail trying to make hay with the old Reagan era. Question, are you better off than you were four years ago? There's a lot of amnesia about what was actually happening in 2020, namely a deadly terrifying pandemic. To some extent, I guess, people treat COVID-19 as an act of God beyond the reach of politicians. But that isn't really true. No matter what we did, many people were going to die. But the death toll was affected by politics, perhaps especially by the way vaccines became a front in the culture war. And America had a really bad pandemic, even compared with its peers. U.S. life expectancy was already lagging behind comparable countries by 2019, but the gap widened after COVID-19 struck. On the other hand, the U.S. economy experienced an exceptionally strong bounce back from the pandemic recession. Even after adjusting for inflation, the U.S. growth's domestic product per capita is up. Since the eve of the pandemic, greatly exceeding growth in both major wealthy economies, this would seem on the face of it to say something good about Biden's economic policy, but public perception of our economic performance is strongly colored by rising prices, inflation, the rate of which prices are rising, has subsided a lot, but prices haven't and won't come down. And there have been huge reclamations against policymakers, both the Biden administration and the Federal Reserve. 
either for supposedly causing the bout of inflation or at any rate failing to prevent it. Here, however, is a case where the similarities between the wealthiest nations are more revealing than their differences. Inflation surged almost everywhere after the pandemic. And if you take care to compare apples to apple, to use the same consumer price measures, inflation has been remarkably similar in different countries. Since the eve of the pandemic, the harmonized index of consumer prices has ridden 19.6% in the United States and 19.8% in the Euro area. This strongly suggests that pandemic related disruptions rather than national politics were inflation's main driver. Still, inflation rankles voters even when income growth exceeds inflation as it has in the United States. People tend to feel that they earn their higher wages only to have them snatched away by higher prices. And this is probably the most important reason that according to the tracking polls conducted by Morning Consult, every single leader of a group of seven nations is underwater with more voters disapproving than approving of their leadership. So who's the winner of this unpopularity contest? Who has the least bad net approval? The answer is Joe Biden with Giorgia Meloni of Italy a close second. The other group of seven leaders are even more unpopular and this has political consequences. The U.S. election worryingly looks like a toss-up, but in Britain, which must hold a general election by January, current projections say that Rishi Sunak's extremely low approval is setting the stage for the virtual collapse of the Conservative Party. Now, you could, and I would say, that Biden should be doing better in the polls given the economic and social fundamentals, very low unemployment, fairly low inflation, and violent crime on the decline. And the United States does seem to stand out for the extent to which voters insist that the economy is bad, even as they say they themselves are doing well. But every political analyst that says the fault for Biden's low approval lies with the president and his campaign, and that he's too old, although that narrative, after suddenly peaking, <laughs> mostly faded away after his State of the Union address or is out of touch with the concerns of real Americans needs to explain why he's doing less badly than his foreign peers. So let me just say here uh, that if you look around the world and I know like people in the Philippines and Thailand for example and inflation is really hitting hard you know Things that they used to buy before, they tell me the prices went up. You look down South, South America, like in Argentina, inflation is it like went over a thousand percent. Inflation, <laughs> imagine that. So, I mean, we here are lucky. And the thing about uh, the one language, I guess what what he's trying to say is that you know, even though. We live in a time now where we have all these apps we could translate things. You could translate a whole page in the foreign languages and you can read. But many Americans are lazy. They're not going to do that. Instead, they rather listen to like some of these wealthy commentators 
and the right wing media spewing a lot of lies, you see, and they will have you believe, wow, we have the worst economy in the world, you know, like uh, inflation is so horrible here that the truth is when you look around the world and you see other countries, you know, Philippines, Thailand, Argentina, all these countries, you know, France, the inflation is high. And unemployment too, yeah. Lots of high unemployment. So we're not even in that category, but when you do listen to them, you get the, the feeling that we're really doing terrible or terribly.